Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I'm going to build something very unique, not something that I've necessarily seen anybody else build, but something that I kind of drew inspiration from. A while back I made myself a uh, blade that kind of resembled an X-Acto knife, and I was looking for other creative ideas like that to do, then I kind of came across something that made me think of it. My nephew and niece like to play with these little rubber toys called Shopkins, which is like they've taken grocery store items and made them into characters. Uh, and I use spray paint all the time, and I thought, why not make a monster-type spray can? And I wanted to try some neon paint from Platifex. Yeah. So today we are going to build what I am calling Cryon the Monster Spray Can. Let's get to building. Let's start by building the cylinder that will make up the spray paint monster. I'm using some 4mm What the Foam EVA from Cosplay Apprentice for the main cylinder and the bottom scoop. The ridges and top will be 6mm and the label will be this red 2mm foam. I also used a 36mm and 24mm EVA dowel for the cap. All these things are listed in the description. I heat form the cylinder so that it doesn't pull apart apart from itself. The bottom of the spray can has the scoop in. By design, this is to allow the last bit of paint to pull in this crack, which allows you to get most of the paint from the inside. I just push a piece of 4mm foam onto my trusty glass dome and hold it there until it cools down. I took my Dremel and sanded an inward bevel on the cylinder, placed it on top of the scoop, and then traced the perimeter. Then it's simply as easy as cutting and gluing this part into place with contact cement. For the top, I just cut a flat circle for me to stack layers of foam onto to make the top. It's literally just a layer of circles with rounded over edges.
I got this ruler on Amazon a while back and lost it in one of the mini totes that hold my stuff. Found it while I was cleaning and am super glad that I did. This makes things so much easier than trying to find a bowl or container that's just the right size. Here I am making the top and the bottom ridge of the can. I could have templated out a curve for the bell shape on the top of the can, but I thought it would be easier just to stack up a couple of layers and sand it flush. Then shape it and make a final pass with a stone bit to smooth it out. To make sure to wear a respirator while sanding EVA, the particles go everywhere, especially right back up into your face. I made my cap out of a 2mm EVA dowel for the top and a 36mm EVA dowel for the lip at the bottom. I sanded in a groove on the top with a stone bit, glued the two parts together, and then joined it permanently to the top of the spray can. The flat bit on my wood burner was almost the perfect shape to mimic the groove on the top of the lid. Because I wanted my label to be ripped and have a face coming through it, I added a layer of 2mm EVA to give it some detail. I just hold it in place, figure out the dimensions, and cut it. Once it's in the right shape, then I add the jagged lines and map out where I want the face to go.
The mouth is simple, just cut some jagged edges within the parameters of the label and cut it out. I hit the edges with a heat gun and bent them outward to give his face a little more dimension. I added the wooden beads in there so that it would make noise like a rattle can when you shook it. I could have gone all out and made a tongue, a uvula, and the other mouth details, but I stopped myself and decided to keep it simple. Just cut out a piece of foam that will roughly fit in the gap and glue it into place. Because I'm using contact cement, I put it in while the glue is still wet. This allows me to position it without having to fight it sticking to parts I don't want it to. To add some paint drool, I glue some hot glue to the roof of his mouth and let it drip down. To speed up the process, I turn a can of compressed air upside down to instantly freeze the glue into place. two coats of Plasti Dip. Then I lightly dust it with some silver, black, and brown spray paint to give it an aged metal look. I printed out the instruction label that you find on the back of the can. You can find it in a Google search pretty easy. I make the edges jagged to match the rest of the can. To blend the label with the edge of the instructions, I put some Platifex acrylic paint to cover the gap. Might have aged it a little too much. You can barely see any of the writing on the back because I've darkened it a little too far.
I used some neon plaid effects paint for the front and probably laid down about five coats to get it to the coverage I was acceptable with. Took some paint pens and hand wrote on all the info on the front. Because it will be dirtied up, it wasn't that big a deal for either of those things. Now time to dirty it up with some brown and black acrylic paint, brush it on, and then wipe off the high points with a paper towel. I got these glass domed eyes off of Amazon and have them on my affiliates page if you want to give them a try. Just glue them into place and I'm done. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. I got a lot of details in there, even the little random numbers on the bottom of your cans and the indention on the lid and the even you can't even tell what that stuff says, but I put lines there anyways to mimic that there was something there. Um, I think it's a pretty cool build. It's definitely unique. It's something that's it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually simple. You're just building a cylinder and then putting caps on the ends. And that's basically it. You could do this with pretty much anything. And I'm, if you guys like this, I may try and tackle another monsterification of a random everyday item. I really like how it turned out. There are a few things I want to point out, though. Um, the plaid effects neon paints. I ended up putting like five coats on and it still wasn't extremely neonish clearish it was it was a little bit splotchy so obviously i dirtied it up and it kind of took away the neon effect anyway so i don't know why i wasted all my time trying to get that neon layer perfect uh the eyes i used this in the death mask from Darksiders mask that I built not too long ago. Uh, this is linked in my affiliates page if you want to go and buy some of these. Uh, they definitely look cool and have all kinds of variations to them. Yeah. Maybe you will try and make a spray can like this yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to turn everyday objects that you use every day into something creepy that will probably give you nightmares later. I'll be watching my back. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. See if we can get a little bit of spray action here. <laughs>